Welcome to the show of biology. I am Roma Malik and I'll be teaching you biology of class 11th. The topic for today is structural organization in plants and animals. Under this, today we'll be dealing with morphology of flowering plants. Well, what is morphology? Morphology is the study of external features of the plant. In angiosperms, we find a wide variety. Now these angiosperms, they may be morphologically different. Angiosperms show a wide diversity in their structure. When we say angiosperms, that means the flowering plants. If we have a look at the flowering plant, we can see that they have the underground portion, the root and the portion above the soil, which is the shoot system. Regarding the roots, let us have a look at this plant. The radical, after the germination of a seed, we find the radical comes out. This radical actually is the primary root. This is the primary root which we find in case of a dicot plant and this primary root later on develops the secondary root and tertiary roots. This type of root system is referred to as taproot system. Now let us have a look at another type of plant. In this plant, we find that the roots they develop from the base of the stem. And these types of roots, they are generally known as the fibrous root. Beside the tap root and the fibrous root, there's another type of root which is known as the adventitious root which develops from the plant parts, just as we find in case of sugar cane, in case of banyan tree. The root. Root is actually the direct elongation of the radical, which leads to the formation of primary root. In dicot plants, root is the direct elongation of the radical, which leads to the formation of primary root, which bears lateral roots and which is referred to as the secondary and tertiary roots. Regarding the function of roots, they are meant for absorption of water and minerals. They help the plant in anchorage and they are also responsible for the synthesis of plant growth regulators. Regarding the regions of the root, the root is covered at the tip by a root cap. Above this root cap, is the zone of meristematic activity and above this meristematic activity is the zone of elongation and proximal to the zone of elongation is the zone of maturation and in this zone of maturation we find the development of the roots that is the secondary roots as well as the tertiary roots. Roots become modified to perform functions other than absorption and conduction of water and minerals. In case of the tap roots of carrots and turnip, we find that they have a solen root because they store food inside it. Beside this, the next is the supporting type of root which is found in the stems of maize and sugarcane. They give support to the plant. There's another type of root which is known as the respiratory root, which is found in case of rhizophora. They have the respiratory roots and these roots, they develop from below the soil vertically upwards and are meant for the process of respiration. These are also referred to as pneumatophores, which is found in case of rhizophora. Well, root is generally known as the descending organ of the plant, the shoot. The shoot is the ascending part of the axis bearing branches, leaves, flowers and fruits. If we have a look at this plant, we can see that this plant or the shoot system has developed from the plumule. The shoot system develops from the plumule of the seed and the root system it develops from the radical. The shoot bears leaves and these leaves are generally born in the nodes. These are the nodal regions. 
Now, in the nodal region where the leaves arises, we also find a bud, which is referred to as the axillary bud. The distance between two nodes is known as the internodes. And these axillary buds are responsible for branching. This bud, which is found at the tip, is known as the terminal bud. The stem bears the flowers, the leaves, the buds, as well as other organs. Let us have a quick recap of the portions which are found in the stem. It bears nodes and internodes. The leaves are borne in nodes. The portion between two nodes is called the internodes. Presence of terminal and axillary bud. These are certain characteristics which differentiates it from the root system. The functions of the shoot. The shoot helps in the spreading of branches. It conducts water, minerals as well as photosynthates. It is also responsible for the storage of food, support, protection, and vegetative propagation. Stem is also modified for various different purposes. For example, in potato, ginger, and turmeric, we find that they are modified for the storage of food. In case of cucumber and pumpkin, the stem is modified into tendrils for the purpose of support. In case of citrus and bougainvillea, we find the presence of thorns which are responsible for the defense purposes. The leaf. Leaf is the lateral flattened structure borne on the stem. This is the flattened structure of the leaf which is borne on the stem and is generally attached to the stem by the stalk which is known as petiole. It develops at the node and it bears axillary bud. It originates from shoot apical meristem and are arranged in acropetal order. They are the important vegetative organs for photosynthesis. The leaf is generally made up of three parts, the leaf base, petiole, and lamina. Let us have a look at this leaf. The stalk of the leaf is known as the petiole. The green flattened portion, this green flattened portion is known as the leaf blade or lamina. This portion, this outer portion, this is the leaf margin. This portion is known as the leaf tip. We find a centrally placed midrib. This is actually the main vein which branches. This is the main midrib and we find there are other veins by the side of the midrib. These veins, they form veinlets and form a reticulate pattern. Venation. The arrangement of veins and veinlets in the leaf is known as venation. If we we'll have a look at this leaf, we can see that they have the midrib and the veins. And these veins, they branch and form the veinlets. It is a network. Such a type of venation is known as reticulate venation, which is generally found in most of the dicots. In case of monocots, of course, the venation is parallel venation. Let us have a look at this. In this leaf, we find that the venation, that is the veins, they run parallel to each other. Such a type of venation is known as parallel venation. So, I think we can clearly distinguish between a reticulate venation and a parallel venation. Now, leaves are of different types. They may be simple leaves, they may be compound leaves. This type of leaf is known as simple leaf. This is a people leaf. Here the lamina is entire. This type of leaf is known as compound leaf. The incision of the lamina reached to the midrib, breaking it into a number of leaflets. 
it may be pinnately compound, it may be palmately compound. This is the leaf of neem plant and this is pinnately compound whereas this plant is palmately compound. Now the difference between the pinnately compound and the palmately compound. Pinnately compound is found in neem tree where the number of leaflets are present on a common rachis. In a pinnately compound leaf just as we find in case of neem tree these are the leaflets and this is the common rachis. Let us have a look at this leaf. This is called palmately compound which is found in case of silk cotton. The leaflets are attached at a common point at the tip of the petiole. If we have a look at this plant we can see that all of them they arise from a common point. Such a type of leaf is known as palmately compound. The pattern of arrangement of leaves is known as phyllotaxy. Basing on this, the leaves can be categorized as alternate, opposite and hold. Let us have a look at this plant. This is the stalk of the leaf and each leaf when originates from the node, they alternate with each other. This is originating from here, the second from this side. So it is alternating. So such a type of leaf is known as alternate leaves. If we have a look at this leaf, we will see that the leaves, they are opposite to each other. This particular stalk of the leaf and this leaf, they arise from the same nodal region. So such a type of leaf is referred to as opposite. The third is the hold one. When more than two leaves, they arise from the nodal region, such a type of pattern is known as hold. Leaves are also modified for various different purposes. For example, in case of peas, the leaves are modified into tendrils for climbing purposes. In case of cacti, they are modified into spines for defense purposes. Whereas, in case of onion, the fleshy leaves are modified for storage of food. Well, students, let us have a quick recap of the portion we studied in this episode. We studied about the ascending organ, the shoot system, the descending organ, the root system, the different portions of the root, the different regions of the root, how the roots are modified for various different purposes, the structure of the stem, the modification of stems for various different purposes leaf, its structure, its morphology, different types of venation, the types of leaves, simple, compound, pinnately compound, palmately compound, phyllotaxy, the pattern of arrangement of the leaves, modification of the leaves. We will be continuing with the other portions of the morphology of flowering plants in the next episode. Mm -hmm.